Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to Golden Futures Channel, advancing major projects in Canada during this commodities boom. Joining us, as always, the Chief Executive Officer, Stephen Wickinson. Welcome back, sir. Well, thanks. It's great to be back. And it's a pleasure to have you in this fascinating time in these volatile geopolitical inflation interest raising environments and gold boating pretty well through all of this. I wouldn't mind breaking down some of your recent reports because Golden Futures uh, reported high grade gold mineralization in six of its drill holes at its Hercules project in Ontario with grades as high as 36.7 grams per ton in those lower depths under a meter. But break this down for us. Tell us what's going on here. Well, what we've been doing here is, is this is our, our inaugural program. This is where we're starting. What we're trying to do is plug up some of the gaps from the historical drilling that were, were uh, put onto this uh, gold mile zone on the Hercules property. The first four holes came back. Um, we were quite surprised uh, because they were they were in the northwest end of, of the veining area, but not outside of what the resource uh, uh, had been calculated on. And then we, we moved to the southwest along the vein zone and started putting in holes five through 10 for the, the next six. And we continue to be pleasantly surprised. But what, and surprised in the sense that each of the holes uh, hit veining the belonging to the, to the gold mile zone, uh, hit the uh, associated uh, mineralization in the wall rock, which we identify as our black mafic magnetic dike. <laughs> That's a mouthful. But, but the black rock is interesting because it's without it being present, we don't see much in the way of gold in, in the quartz vein, even though the, though the vein may be there. This is observations on the surface uh, as we're looking down. The latest six holes um, were uh, quite exciting because, as you said, we, we hit some pretty spectacular woods and grades. Um, the, the weakest uh, grade was, was about four meters of a gram, which just slips in under what we would consider our cutoff grade. But then uh, in hole six and seven, we end as, ended up hitting quite substantial uh, gold mineralization, uh, about three and a half meters of six grams per ton in hole six. And then in the midst of that intersection, there was a just under a meter of 13.3 grams, which is quite high grade for, by today's standards. Then hole seven, it was two and a half meters of 7.65 grams. And in the middle of that, which as you had mentioned, was a, a nice little uh, hit of 0.7 meters of 36.70 grams per ton. And in, and in old fashioned terms, that's north of an ounce per ton. Pretty high, pretty good for, for today's standards. But the thing that was really neat is that below that uh, zone, we hit about, oh, about another uh, 10 or 12 meters below that, we hit a, a yet another interval of two meters of about two grams with about a half meter of 6.4 grams in the middle of that, a parallel vein, which is something that we, we our geologists have been touting we got to watch for, because this is something, a nice stacked vein area, which the more stacking of veins you get and the more grades you get there, the more likely you can start moving large volumes of rock to get large volumes of gold. In. Yeah. So we're pretty excited. You know, you know, the highlights, yep. We've hit in 10 holes, 10, 10 times the main uh, gold mile zone. And we're getting sub, uh, substantial uh, intersections in parallel veining, which isn't necessarily part of the components of, of the historic drilling. So we're pretty, pretty happy. We're actually making discoveries at a time when we're just trying to tip our toe in the pool to, to learn what this thing's all about. So, uh, so uh, and, and a final point, of course, is that all the drilling we're doing here is in a way gap filling or extending of the of the old historical resources. So what we are looking to is to expand that resource and get it up to something that's going to be worth mining. So you know, something not unsubstantial like a million ounces or so. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, I don't think anyone's complaining about these current results to kick off the the section of your drill program here and just even expanding beyond that. I mean, you guys announced a non-brokered financing trying to raise a million dollars. It's currently in closing uh, with plans. Uh, how are you going to utilize that cash? What's the plan there? Well, the uh, right now we've went in the, well, in the fall, we raised two point seven five million dollars. Um, to do the work we're doing uh, and make the option payments and so forth. We're down to about $400,000 in hard dollars. And rather than spending our hard dollars, we thought we'd go about and raise, raise a little bit more in the way of flow through and some more hard dollars just to, to make sure that we've got a, a bit of a cushion. 
and, when, and I'm looking for this cushion to carry us through to the late summer when if, uh, if, uh, if any of our viewers remember, uh, we had uh, made a deal for our new fee property called the Brady. And then Brady, we had, we had uh, sold for a, a US $3 million consideration paid in uh, shares of a private company called Beaver Gold Corp. Beaver Gold Corp is in the process of listing itself on, on the NASDAQ. And, it, and the shares it's issuing to us will be priced at the, the closing of their pre-IPO financing, which we believe is being done at $1 a share. So we'll get 3 million shares uh, with a, a total pre-listing value of US $3 million. The listing minimum price for uh, NASDAQ uh, is four US dollars a share. So that $1 a share stock goes to $4 a share and our $3 million US goes to $12 million US. And after a brief hold period, we can start selling it, that and harvesting the value of about $12 million US in Beaver Gold. That's probably one of the best non-dilutive financings I've ever done in my life. The, uh, uh, so that is the purpose for the smaller financing we're doing right now. It's, it's my cushion. It allows us to continue the exploration work through the, the summertime, uh, have a, a nice solid news flow, and, and, uh, and then really be able to go, go crazy late summer into the fall when we have a substantial working capital to pursue probably a multi-drill program and really then start to add ounces to our resources. I think your experience uh, in this strategy is, is proving to be uh, pretty insightful to any of the retail audience that's interested in the uh, the mining and exploration sector. I really appreciate your time today, Stephen. Thanks so much for coming out. Well, I'm I'm glad we're able to get to that point because that's those are we hit on some very important fe uh, features of golden futures right now. So thank you very much. No, my pleasure. And I look forward to seeing these results come down the wire. If you are as well, consider subscribing for those updates because we'll release them here. And let us know what you think in that comment section below. We'd love to hear. But in light of this, stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.